Hello, this is Tom Cosm. Uh, this video is going to be an explanation of a delay, a dub delay, which I created a few days ago. I made a video, but I didn't actually explain it because uh, I was just going through the process. Today I'm going to be explaining it. It's, it's pretty standard dub delay using a, uh, a return track that feeds back on itself, um, which is a really good way to make a dub delay because the feedback uh, kind of deteriorates and you get that really kind of gritty sound. Like so. Um, but I'm going to be explaining it. I've, I, there's a few other things that I've added in here. There's actually quite a lot of stuff. Uh, I've got some Max for Live stuff. Um, which feeds to another tra channel which has another EQ and what that does is it brings frequencies down So it listens to what's currently happening in the delay chain and it brings frequencies down when they start getting out of control uh, and The reason I've done this is it's really handy um, in a live situation because You can go off and do something else you might accidentally send it to a delay the feedback on the delay is set up way too high and it starts getting out of control really quickly. So this is kind of a safeguard in a way, and it also kind of shapes the sound, which which I really really enjoy. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna build this from scratch while I while I talk to you about it. I think it's the easiest way to do. I'm gonna create a new return track here. These were my original two tracks. I'm gonna get rid of those. So I've got my A return here. Now the simplest way to create a, a dub delay in this style is um, to simply put a delay over the track. So I've got a simple delay here. I'm um, going to give it 100% wet value, so this is going to delay the sound and then it's going to uh, It's only going to play the delayed sound in this channel because we've got the original sound already playing out of one of these Tracks here you can have as many tracks as you want. I'm going to be uh, Delaying out this kind of organ sound here But I'm um, over on the simple delay so you give that 100% wet so you're only playing the delay sound I'm going to link the left and right channels together because unlinked it's going to be playing a different delay time the left and the right time which can be cool if you want to change this round but I'm going to link them together and put these on a, a three three sixteenth notes that's all that's that's all I'm going to do for this one I'm going to have zero percent feedback because the feedback is actually going to happen by sending the send back to itself so this return track here sorry the return track back to itself so this return track here um, you see the send is disabled by default it's because if you don't have something like a delay on it and you enable the send and turn it up it's going to uh, send the audio straight back into that send without any delay or anything and that's going to cause a really nasty sound spike uh, very dangerous actually on a big system um, but now I've got a delay there I can actually turn that up as loud as I want which is cool uh, but obviously this would be the control as to how much feedback is getting sent into itself um, I don't want to use that one to control the feedback because I want to be using a um, something I can put into a rack so I'm going to put up a limiter here so this limiter here, this will now control uh, the volume of the delay. So if the volume goes above the current level, it'll start getting louder and louder. And if it's below the current level, it'll start going um, <clears throat> uh, softer and softer. So let's have a quick listen to that. Let's bring up the A send. So again, the audio is coming from this channel. It's going to this return track. Then it's getting fed out of the return track and back into the return track. So if I bring the limiter up quite a lot, And you'll notice also by using a limiter, it means when it does actually hit um, uh, 0 dB or whatever, or when it starts getting too loud, it doesn't actually redline, it kind of distorts it and you get a crunch, which is quite nice. So that's um, that's that's one way to do it. Now, the other cool thing to do here is to add a an EQ, I use an EQ8. And the reason I do this is because I can now turn all of these four different poles into different types of um, different different shapes, and these will... These mean that each time the echo happens, it'll cut out particular frequencies. So if I pick this uh, bottom pole here, I'm going to choose uh, this kind of high pass kind of shell filter here. You'll notice in Ableton Live 9, we have these new ones, which are times four and times four as well. So this just means it's got a much sharper ramp, which is exactly what we want. Uh, the one up here, I'm going to turn into a low pass times four. And then these two, I'm just going to leave them how they are. Now, the reason I do this is because I can now group together all of these like so open up my macros and I can map the uh, frequency of this high pass pole to one knob I'm gonna map the, this one which is the the low pass kind of filter I'm gonna map the frequency of that to this macro okay so now if I bring this macro up I can kind of control the sound I can already control the sound already now these actually I'm, I'm gonna get rid of this five here we don't actually want that I only want three poles in this filter, so I'm going to map 
this uh, f frequency of this middle, I guess, pole you called to this macro, and I'm going to map the gain of that one to the other macro. So now these four knobs will control, I can cut off the lows, I can cut off the highs, I can bring, I can, I can uh, remove a particular frequency with this one if the gain's on negative 15, I can actually take frequencies away, which is quite cool. Um, I can show you a cool technique in a minute why that's cool. Or you can bring the gain up and you can focus on particular frequencies, or you can just have it on zero, which is pretty handy within itself. Um, you'll notice that I've got adaptive Q on, adaptive resonance, which is neat. So that means that as I bring it up, the, the resonance shapes. Okay, so it creates a nice shape. Uh, so as I bring it up, it gets sharper and sharper. If I have this off, you'll notice it, it just kind of it doesn't really uh, use that algorithm, I guess, to sharpen it up. I, I prefer having it on. It's quite quite nice. So that's all good. So if I move over here to the, the push over here, actually, I'm going to rename these first. Let's just rename this to, whoops, rename this to low, rename this to mid. Uh, we'll go mid, gain, and we'll call this high. And, of course, if we look over here on the push, we have, we can control these. So, oh, and yeah, so that's that's neat. So now I can shape the, uh, the EQ of the delay, of each individual delay, and each time it feeds back, it shapes it again and again and again and again, and that's where you get these cool kind of off into nothing or really destroyed up delays. Uh, one thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to map the limiter to this knob here. So that means that I have control over the feedback, so if it gets out of hand, I can turn it down, and if it's not um, active enough, I can turn it up. So let's go off map here, and let's just play that for a minute. Let's turn the gain down while I start. So I'm just going to bring the gain up, so get some feedback happening. And now I can use these to shape it. Get some of the highs through. Let's bring the lows down. Now I can play with the mids. See, I can kind of remove frequencies and make them fight. Got too much gain. Or I can bring them up. Let's just put some uh, some of those uh, beats and stuff back in. And you can get some really cool artifacts. See, by using these, uh, this mid gain, I can kind of subtract frequencies, and the other ones will kind of come up. So a lot of fun to be hit, had there. So that's a pretty standard kind of uh, setup or a rack for. A dub delay but I'm gonna do something different here and this is what I was talking about before about subtracting frequencies you'll notice things get really loud sometimes and it can get out of hand so I'm gonna go ahead here and create a new return track like so now this return track is gonna be uh, fed by the uh, return track that I just created so I'm gonna call this out and we'll call this delay so what that means is I can now enable this send here which is send B I can bring that up like so and put the output of this delay channel to sends only. So before it was sending to the master channel, it was delaying and going up to the master. Now I'm just going to send it to sends only. So that means B is going to be picking up what's happening here. Why that's good is because now we can put stuff on the out here. For example, uh, something I like to do is to put, let's use a Convolution Reverb Pro, I believe that's what I used last time. So we can put a reverb on here. Give it a bit of gain. That's quite cool, and um, what I also like to do is add an LFO, this is a Max for Live patch here. MIDI audio, where are we? LFO. 
and I can see it gives me this LFO which kind of moves up and down it's like a like an oscillator but it moves at a really slow speed thus the low frequency oscillator uh, and we can change how fast it goes it doesn't actually produce a sound you can actually map this to something so I'm going to map this to the dry wet of the reverb the dry wet meaning how much reverb is actually playing so you'll notice how this moves up and down now um, I can bring the offset down right down so that every now and then it just lets through a little bit of reverb if I bring the depth down as well like so, bringing it up, even a bit less. Just, I just wanted occasionally to reverberate. bit more very good now another thing we can do on this um, this out channel is I'm going to add another EQ8 here before everything now this EQ8 this is the one that I'm going to be using uh, to subtract frequencies when they start getting out of hand now the way that this needs to happen is something needs to be listening on this channel. It needs to be listening and know when something's really loud. And when it's really loud, it needs to be able to send to this particular EQ and say, okay, well, this frequency is loud. We need to turn it down. Um, now, this is quite a workaround way to do it. Um, if I was a bit more proficient in Max Alive, I could probably program it, but it's a little bit beyond me at the moment. But I'm working on it. But this is, this is the way that I do it. So I have this audio effect rack. That's all good. If I load up my chains here, this is where the delay part actually happens. So I'm going to call this chain delay. I'm going to create a new chain here. Now this chain I'm going to call follower. And the only thing that this chain is going to... Let's call it listener. Listener. The only thing that this chain does is listen to what's currently happening. And... Um, and send information to this out channel so it brings down frequencies and I do this by loading up an EQ8 into the listener channel I'm going to get rid of one of these poles because we only need three I'm going to change it like before I'm going to change this one into a high pass this one into a low pass and I'm going to group this one together again so now this one is in a rack which is inside a chain of the initial parent rack that means I can go into these macro controls I can map the frequency of each one of these poles to a macro. So I'm going to map this one. So I'm going to click on this, click on frequency, and click map. This one, frequency, map. This one, frequency, map. All to the same knob. Okay, so that means as I bring this up, you see how we've got a we can we got kind of a little hill. It's only letting through the frequencies that are in that inside that little little box there. Now it's a little bit too thin, so I'm going to bring this down to its bottom value. And you'll notice when we go into map mode, we can change the range of um, how much this knob affects a certain parameter. So what we can do is we can bring up these ones here just a little bit until we get the kind of shape that we want. So I'm just going to bring these up a little bit. So the low value, get that one in the middle. So the low value here is uh, quite low, but as we bring them up to the top, see how they're all at the, the same maximum? That means they're all going to go back into a thin thing up the top. We don't want that. So as we go up to the thin one, we're going to bring this one down a little bit and this one down halfway. So that means now this macro knob will have a pretty continuous, um, pretty continuous little, little uh, hill. I don't really know what to call it. We'll call it a bandpass filter if you want. That sweeps up and down. So that's neat. And the reason I put this in a rack is because we're going to be duplicating this over and over and over. Okay. So once we've got that rack there, we'll call this band. I'm going to group this again into a group and bring up our chains. So this chain I'm going to call 1. So this chain contains this audio effect track which has a band. I'm going to duplicate this and call it 2. So if we go over to 1 here, let's, this, we're, get, we're going to have 8 of these and each one of these 8 um, chains is going to be listening to a certain range of frequencies. So by bringing the band down on the first one, it's focusing on these frequencies. If I go to 2, we can have it focusing on these frequencies. So there's 1, there's 2. 2 needs to go up a little bit. 1, 2, like so. I'm going to duplicate this again and go call this 3 and bring this one up a bit. So you kind of want them to match where the last one stopped. Again, duplicate. Rename 4. Up again. 
It's one of these great moments where I do computer stuff where you just have to watch me for a second. Duplicate, rename five, bring it up to here. Let's actually, let's just go with six for today so we don't have to, we don't um, drag on a bit. And I'll bring six right up here, bring five up here a bit. Uh, there. Actually, no, I'm going to have to do eight to cover the whole spectrum. Three, four, five. There. Six. There. Now, if you're if you're quite if you're a real geek, you can probably go through and do this perfectly using that mathematics thing. Which some of you probably learnt in high school or something. Um, so they're a little bit uneven. So eight's there. I'm going to bring seven down a bit. Bring six down a bit. I'm just kind of evening them out a bit more. Five down a bit. Four. Three, two, one. So neat. So now that delay is going to be fed into this rack. It's splitting it into eight different um, chains. Each chain has an audio effect with a band pass on it. And each one of these band passes is going to pick up uh, what is currently playing in that frequency range of the band pass. Um, now the issue is, of course, this listener channel is going to actually play out uh it's going to it's going to play what's happening in this rack which is not what we want this i only want these here to be listening i don't want them to actually feed the frequency through and let the audio through so a good way to get rid of that is to add a gate right after the end of this listener rack okay so make sure you don't add it on any of these chains in this rack we want to go up one rack and add it to this listener rack so by doing that i go bulk listener and you'll see it's put a gate at the end so if i just play this Okay, so what, what's happening there? Apologies if that hurt your eardrums. Uh, this listener track doesn't have a delay on it, so that, that's doing, um, that's creating that feedback loop that I was talking about before that's really dangerous. Uh, when I edit this video, I'll make sure to bring that down so, so it doesn't hurt any of you guys' ears. So, as I said, that's the problem with the listener rack. So what we need to do is we need to have a gate down. Yeah. So let's bring the threshold right up, bring this down. It's quite a cool sound. So now I can bring that up safely. So you see this gate here, it's, um, I'm setting the threshold at, uh, at 6 decibels. So anything that plays under 6 decibels is going to be cut off, which is everything in here. When I had that threshold down, uh, it was playing anything that went over the threshold. It was actually playing and feeding back into the loop. And because it, it didn't have a delay on it, it was getting that horrible piercing sound. So that was a mistake, but I hope you saw how I corrected it there. Very good. So now these are all listening, but they're not actually feeding the audio through. That's good because now we can put Max for Live devices after this. So what I'm going to do is go into my Max for Lives. I'm going to use the envelope follower here. So on audio effect number one, I'm going to put an envelope follower after the EQ. I'm just going to feed the bass to the um, delay channel because we're working with the low frequency here. So you can see the envelope follower, it's listening to the audio that's coming from this EQ8 here. And whenever it's um, picking up a signal, um, it's displaying the gain of that signal as a line. And because it's an envelope follower, it means we can map that line to something that we choose. And I'll get on to what we're going to map that to in a minute. But um, what we also need to do here is we need to give it some gain. And we need to give it some fall. Now fall means when it when the line hits its peak, it's going to, um, it's going to come down slowly rather than uh, suddenly. Excellent. But this envelope follower um, where'd it go? There he is. This envelope follower, I don't, I don't want it to, to, to pick up a level every time just that frequency is playing. I want it to pick up a level when that frequency starts getting really loud. So as we did before with the gate, we can chuck one on before the envelope follower. Now you'll notice uh, there's, I need to put the return up to zero decibels here. You'll notice nothing's happening in the envelope follower because no, none of these frequencies, none of this gain is actually going over that line. So as I bring the threshold down, so if I leave it there, nothing's happening. 
but if I get into a big uh, feedback loop, let's bring it up a little bit more, I find about 12 is good. So if I bring the gain up of this feedback here, it'll start feedback and feedbacking and feedbacking. If I bring the low right down, of course, remember to let through the low frequencies. If I bring this right up, we need it to go up really, really hard. I'll make sure we have this up. This is bugged out a bit. Let me just close down some of this stuff here so we can get to this. Um, we can see everything at once, so I'm just going to close down the chain. Well, I can't close down the chain. That's frustrating. Um, well, you can get the idea. See, as I, as I bring this up, the bass gets out of hand. If I bring the um, high pass down here. Just the bass is going to feed back. And then it starts getting really, really loud. And when it gets loud, this envelope, envelope follower goes crazy. And that's, that's what we want. And I'll show you why we want that. So I'm going to bring this down. Now I'm going to copy this audio effect rack here that I've got. I'm going to copy it here. Actually, I'm just going to click on it, hold down the option key, and drag it onto this B out. Okay? And this is going to replace that EQ I had before. So I'm going to drag this audio effect rack over here. And the reason I've done this is because we've already got our six, um, sorry, our eight uh, EQ8s, which are splitting the frequencies up, which is good. Now, I don't need this gate and envelope follower on this one, because this is the one that's going to be listening. So this one, this one has, this one's sending signals, and I'm going to make this one listen. And the way I do that is because of this, um, this envelope follower after the gain, I can say when this one, when this frequency gets too loud, if it gets over that gain point, it's going it's going to trigger this envelope follower. And this envelope follower, I'm going to map the envelope follower to the volume of its corresponding chain or band of frequencies over here on the out channel, like so. Okay, so see by clicking on it, I've mapped I've mapped it to the volume here of this chain. It's instantly gone to negative infinity decibels. Because if we look over on our um, our mapping section here, you see it has uh, zero when it when there's no signal, and it has a hundred um, when it's a high signal. So it's going to go between zero and a hundred. I don't want that. I actually want this um, to be at say 50% normally, and zero percent when it gets too high. So I've kind of flipped it around. I've reversed it around. So that should mean when I go over here, you'll see this is at negative four um, dB. Actually, let's change this to. 100. This is all kind of trial and error stuff. So if we go back over here, so that's what we want. Okay, so that means when there's no signal coming in this envelope follower, it's sending 100, 100% if you like, to this um, volume of the audio effect track, which puts it at 6 decibels, which is what we want. And when it gets over that point, it's going to bring it down to 50%, which is probably about negative 15. So let's see if that works. Let's just bring the gain up a lot. So if we go and have a look at this out, yeah, you'll see it's negative 14. So because this is getting such a large chunk of information here, it's it's, it's sending the signal to, to, to bring this one down. It's pretty neat, huh? So we're going to do that for all channels. I'm going to bring down the gain, like so. And let's group these together. So this is, this is the thing, the two things that we've created. I'm going to group these together again. So we've got lots of racks happening here. Load up the macro. I'm going to map the threshold to here and bring it back up to what we had, which was about 12. I'm going to map the gain of the envelope follower to the other knob. The gain's the important one because if you're finding uh, that it's... Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's peaking too high when it's getting lots of uh, information, you can bring the gain down. And the gain I set on at about 20 or 21. So I've created a macro here. I'm going to call this M follower just so we don't get lost. And I can now uh, copy that across to all of these chains. So I'm going to hold down the option key here, drag it to number 2. 
So now we have on one on number two. You see how the map is reset because it can't you can't have two envelope followers mapped to the same parameter. So very good. Now I'm going to drag envelope follower to three. Let's drag it to four. Drag it to five. Drag it to six. Drag it to seven. Whoops. Create a new chain there. Seven. And drag it to eight. Very good. So now we have an envelope follow on every track. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to load up my macros of this audio effect wrap, which we will call listener. And I'm going to map. This is just good good to good to get into the habit of this. I'm going to map uh Hmm, this is gonna take me a while. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. What I'd usually do is I'd go into this rack and I'd map threshold to that, gain to that. Actually, no, let's do it. It's, it's, it won't take a second. Threshold. Uh, uh, this is where it gets confusing. We need the envelope follower to be after each one of these racks. So I accidentally had it up one level like so. See, we've got this little gap here. It's a bit hard to actually notice sometimes. That actually needs to be there in order for me to map the threshold to here and the gain to here. Okay, next one. Donk. So same again. I've made a mistake here, but that's all right. We can just drag this across. Map. Whoops. Map. Threshold here gain to here. This is about the limit of how deep I can get with racks before I start going absolutely crazy. Um, and you all, well, I always screw it up somehow and have to backtrack because, you know, every every time you add a new rack inside of a rack, you're kind of multiplying the complexity of everything. I don't think I can handle one more. Leave a comment if you, uh, and let me know how many, how deep you can go with your racks. I'd be interested to know. Six. Nearly there. Map. The reason I'm doing this is I have to map them all back to macro knobs and then go back and back and keep mapping them back and back until I get to my master or the absolute parent of um <clears throat> of the big huge rack because I want to be able to have control over that threshold and gain from the parent so I can change them with the push as I like. And last one. Envelope follow up, put it back here. Where are we? Still getting lost. Not much you can do. Thanks for hanging in there. Map. Okay. So now each one of those is mapped to uh to to the macro here. If I can go like this. Ah oh, look I have to do one more. <laughs> okay. Quickly. Threshold, map, gain, map, two. Threshold. Oops. No, that was correct. Threshold. Map. Gain. Map. Two. Threshold. Okay, that's cool. So we can map these all to the same macro knobs. So these um these two macro knobs will change the threshold. Oops. Change the threshold and the gain of each. Uh, envelope follower, I believe we call them. Threshold gain. We take this moment to uh, reflect on something you've achieved today, or what you're going to have for dinner. Very good. And finally, that means we can now map them here. So threshold can go here, gain can go here. Now I have control over every single threshold on that gate of the envelope follower, which, what did we have it at? We had it at negative uh, 12.5 will do, and gain, we had that on 21. Excellent. Now we need to go through the process of going through each in individual envelope follower and mapping the actual envelope follower of that rack to the uh, right frequency. So I've already done it, already done it with this, this frequency here. So we need to go in here, we need to go to number two, find the envelope follower, there he is, and map him to the volume of this one. And of course we need to change the uh, mapping, uh, the, did that work properly? Change 
chain volume 100 to 50. Yeah, that, that, okay, so they're already done. I thought we had to uh, change the um, the maximum and minimum values again, but because we copied and pasted it, we don't, which is good. That was an accident, but it saves us time. Number three, map that to the volume of number three. Number four, map that to the volume of number four. Five. If you're still following me here, I'm very impressed. You get a gold star. Six. Map. And it's cool because you can map stuff anywhere in Ableton. I mean, we don't have to map these to the volume. We're doing it now, but you could map these to um, the envelope fuller to anything. You could put kind of uh, some kind of bit crusher, re you know, or, or some something that really distorts the sound so that when a particular band of frequencies gets out of control, it doesn't just bring the volume down, it starts crunching it up or or cutting it off or adding a reverb. This, I mean, the possibilities are, are endless. This is quite CPU intensive. It's quite a uh, complicated way to do this. Um, and I'm kind of doing it just to just to show you that it can be done. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just hopefully it's, it was a learning curve for me creating it so now this listener is listening to everything if one of the frequencies gets out of hand this one is going to uh, change now what I need to do here is if you just bear with me very quickly I just need to grab my other MIDI controller and by the powers of editing I now have my other MIDI controller set up the reason I've set up my other MIDI controller is simply because I can have uh, knobs I can assign in MIDI mode um, so I can change uh, the macros in this rack and show you the actual result over on this one um, so I'm just going to go into MIDI mode here I've got eight knobs in front of me I'm going to map this one here mid, mid gain, high and we'll map the threshold and the gain to those ones and the gain or the feedback to that knob so that should all work out let me just double check that so I can change the high, the lows, the mids Mid gain, the highs, the threshold, the gain. Make sure we put those on what we had before, 21. And run up a wee bit. And this gain here will control feedback. Okay, now that means I can go in here. Let's bring the gain down. Now let's have a look and see if this works. Now keep your eye on the volume here. Okay, so as I move. Actually, what's best is if we put a, uh, we'll put a spectrum here and bring it up. So you'll be able to see the frequencies that are dominating, and hopefully when the frequencies that are dominating get a high peak on this uh, spectrum scale here, the volume will come down on the relative channel on this audio effect track. Let's have a let's have a go and see if it works. So you can see the ones that are at negative fourteen. As I go down, it lowers the the frequency of these ones. Excellent. So that's um, that's working. That's that's how I want it. Um, so and you see when there's no fr frequencies, these guys will reset back to six decibels. So they're very um, they specifically subtract volume when it gets out of hand, which uh, keeps the other frequencies at a good level, but just brings the volume down of the level that's going crazy. And it makes it a lot easier to do really good lush dub outs. Um, one other trick. That I'm just going to add here, just just to add something else, is I like to put a um, an auto pan 
let's say before the uh, limiter, auto pan moves things from left to right to left to right at a particular rate that you define by an LFO. Um, you don't have to, at the moment, the rates in hertz or frequencies, so this is uh, cycles per second of how it's going to sweep left and right in different, um, or it changes the volume in, in the right and left channels. If I change the phase to zero, both both um, left and right are going to be synced up together, so it's not going to have a stereo effect, and I can put the rate on something which is synced to the time of the music. So I'm going to keep it on 16th notes, and I can change the curve as well. I'm going to change it to a saw ramp, so the sound's it plays the sound at full volume and then cuts it and then full volume and then cuts it now, this is quite neat uh, because I can assign this amount now if I go into map mode I can assign this amount to this final macro knob here and that means when I bring this up it's going to quickly stutter what's currently being delayed it just it, when things get really really crazy it's a good way to just give it a little jolt and get something new and exciting inside the delay and I'm just going to assign that MIDI thing to a knob as well so let's see if this works here so let's bring that amount up. Excellent. So there you go. That's um, that's <laughs> that's my attempt at explaining what I've done. Again, it's a very long way to achieve this result, uh, but it's been a lot of fun making it, and it shows off a lot of capabilities of Ableton Live and Max for Live, uh, showing how you can use levels, specifically envelope followers, to route particular things that you hear to affect something else somewhere else within your set or your track. So if you've got any questions, make sure you post them in the comments. Uh, and yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Cosm.co.nz